I have two products I want to share with you today, a headlamp and a camping lantern from a company called Hocolite. If you're interested in hearing more about these, keep watching. So before we begin, I just want to point out that these items were sent to me for testing and review, and I did not pay for them. However, I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video. So some time ago, the company Hocolite reached out to me and offered to send me a couple of sample products, these specifically. And when I looked at them, I wasn't sure that these were items that would be of interest to you and would fit within what my channel normally reviews. However, when I gave it some more thought, I realized that some of the lights that I've been sharing with you as of lately are a bit on the expensive side for some people. That's not to say they're not good quality or worth the money that you would pay for them, but it's still more money than some people are willing to pay for a headlamp or camping lantern or a flashlight. So that's where these come in. These are quite reasonably priced items that are still of good quality and having done the testing, they have their limitations, but still they seem to function very well. So that's the reason why I took them up on their offer and I have these to show you. Okay, what we'll do now is I'm going to take you down to the tabletop. I'll give you the specifications, the modes of operation and the other features for both the headlamp and the campy lantern. I'll then take them out to the woods and show you them in operation. We'll come back and we'll talk about my thoughts on the flashlights before we close out. All right, we're going to jump right into the specifications such that I have uh, and the modes of operation in one moment. The only thing I have to share with you is that it did come with a USB to micro USB charging cable. Nothing else came with it in the box. So it is, I will, of course, give you all the specifications in the video description below. But suffice to say, it's a very lightweight ABS and silicone uh, constructed lamp. And the, the major features of it are, to start with, it has a, uh, a single LED spotlight which rides on the side of your head, as you'll see in a few minutes' time when I try it on. And then over your forehead is this floodlight, which they refer to as COB, C-O-B, or Circuit On Board. And it provides a 210 degree wide uh, floodlight. So that's, you know, it's quite nice. It has a silicone body primarily with some ABS in the housing on the side. It is operated from a single switch. Now this may be a little difficult to pick up, but I'll try and see if it'll come in. Right here is the switch that operates the flashlight on. And you have to cycle through each of the lights before to get through it so it doesn't have a memory or anything it's very simple operation it starts out with the uh, floodlight first cycle low cycle high and then it flips over to the spotlight cycle low cycle high now it has one other feature which is kind of unique and I'll share my thoughts with you in a minute and that it, it has a motion sensor on the side which you can use to turn in the light on and off and let me demonstrate that for you so to start with you turn the light on and now you can and of course you have to press the motion sensor button as well and you know it is on and so hopefully it'll show up there's a little I don't know zigzag right there and the color changes from just green to red and green to indicate that the motion sensor is functioning and then you just wave your hand in front of two little uh, sensor buttons right there and it will turn it on and off um, I'll share my thoughts more with it once I do some demonstrations outside. This is, is a nice feature. Um, it doesn't always function as well as I thought it might or should, but at the same time, you don't have to use it. So to turn it off again, press the button again, and it should turn that feature off. And now you can see we just have a red, meaning it's just functioning fully from the one switch here. It has an adjustable headband. It's a, a good quality adjustable headband, quite, uh, quite comfortable. And what I like about it is it has a, quite a range of motion. So I can put this on with a two carbini and still get it around there. And I think that's important for this type of light because when you're wearing this on the side of your head, it doesn't go, work well if it's hanging directly underneath your chin around your neck. So it is important that it, it is able to be worn on your head. Uh, there is a softer 
liner to the headband itself. It is uh, still feels like a synthetic of some type, but it is softer, it is quite absorbent. The head brand doesn't breathe, however, so uh, if you're going to perspire a lot, you're going to use it in a lot of activity, you can expect that that is going to get damp on the back of the headband or headlamp, sorry. Now, the only other feature to share with you on this is the charging port, which has got a small rubber cover to uncover it right there, and you can see the micro USB charging port. Now, I do want to address the waterproofness of this, so I was looking for an IP rating, and I could not find any on the website, so I reached out to the company, and uh, this item does not have an IP rating. Now, Interestingly enough, when I show you the Lantern in a moment, it does have an IP rating, but this one does not. However, they assured me it is waterproof for its intended use. Uh, I'm not sure what that would mean. I did not dunk this underwater to see if it would short circuit. I'm assuming the intended use is uh, hiking or running uh, the trails and that any uh, rain that might get at it, it should be waterproof from that. I am a tiny bit skeptical of that only because this does not lock in. This little charging port cover does not lock in. Now that doesn't mean that it will short out if it gets wet, but uh, it does mean to me that it is not as well protected as something that has a better uh, plug on the back of the charging port. All right, let's go through the modes of operation and the intensities for the headlamp. So everything, as I mentioned, is operated from the single button back here. So when you press it on, it comes on at the high intensity for the floodlight, which is 1200 lumens. Press it again, it reduces down to the low intensity for the floodlight of 600 lumens. Press it again, it goes on to the high intensity for the single LED of 1200 lumens. And press it again, and it goes down to the low intensity uh, for the spotlight of 600 lumens. If I hold it for about three seconds, you can see it does have a strobe light. And then if I press it again, it turns off and you're back to the floodlight again. Now, it uh, has some good run times, not ex excessively long, but some pretty good run times considering the size of the battery. And I'll be sure to include all that information in the uh, video description below. Let's take a look at the camping lantern now. So the only thing that came with the camping lantern is another micro U USB charging cable, so we'll put that aside. So I want to give you a few of the features, then we'll go through the modes of operation and the different intensities. So despite the fact that it is not a, an expensive high-end looking piece, it is actually well constructed, and uh, I've come to appreciate some of the features, such as the, the green uh, body of this, making it easier to find when the light levels are low. Uh, the bottom and the top is quite a thick rubberized giving leading to some of its impact resistance which we'll talk more about in a second it has a single operation on off button on this side but what's unique about it is on the other side the charging port is has both a input usb micro usb as you can see it's quite snug there we go has an input for micro USB, but it also has an output allowing this to be used as a power bank to charge other items such as a cell phone. It has a 4400 milliamp power bank, lithium ion power bank built into the light, so it's not bad. You know, it will charge us the average cell phone at least once or twice, so you can use it for both things. It does have hooks on the top, a split ring hook affair, which is kind of unique in that it allows you to run a string, cord, ridge line, whatever else you have through this, or just over a branch or a hook at the same time. Uh, they're not super heavy duty, but but I do believe they, yeah, they're metal on the inside, so they're, they're not likely to snap off. Certainly, uh, it's not just plastic, which would have concerned me, but they fold down out of the way if you don't want to use them as well. So let's talk about its uh, IP uh, rating. As I mentioned a minute ago, it does have an IP rating of 44. And what I can tell you is it does have a one meter impact resistance. And I'm going to have to look up what an IP44 is 
rating stands for and I'll put that information on the screen and in the video description below. Let's go through the modes of operation and the different intensity levels for the lantern. So everything is operated as I mentioned from a single button here on the side and it starts by uh, coming in at the high of 3000 lumens, the medium of 1500 lumens, the low of 900 lumens, press it again, it brings it to the red lamp. And if I press it again, it brings it to the red strobe. So let me turn that off. Now I'm going to turn it back on. It will come on again at the high mode. But if I leave it set for long enough, and uh, I haven't been able to measure this, it's about five seconds, and then turn it off again, Rather than run through each of the levels, it, go, it turns off directly. Now it does have a memory. It'll come back on to the last intensity used. You just have to be sure to let it run for about five seconds before you turn it off if you want to use this memory function. So there's not a lot more I can show you or tell you about either the headlamp or the camping lantern. So we'll get outside and do some demonstrations with it. But I thought I would share with you what it's like to have this on my forehead and operated. So as I mentioned, there's a single operation switch up here on the side. And and if I press down on the switch, I have the floodlight come on, cycling down to its lowest mode, the spotlight come on, cycling down to its lowest mode. And uh, that's about all there is to say about this. Uh, we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. We'll come back and we'll have some closing thoughts. So I am out here in the woods testing out the Hoka light headlamp and camping lantern and right now I'm using the headlamp to illuminate the area around me and uh, this is the higher intensity because of course that's where it starts when you turn it on and it has that 210 degree of illumination so it gives me good broad I mean I can't turn my head far enough that I can see a dark spot on either side if that makes any sense but this is uh, marvelous marvelous for being able to see what I'm doing in front of me on the high intensity now if I turn it down hit the switch again that's the low intensity and uh, you know that's still sufficient I could probably navigate through the woods on this at least on a well-marked path but certainly enough light to do any chores I might need around the campsite or read as uh, as I might want to do All right hit the light again and this is no that's not one more there we go this is the spotlight at its higher intensity. Now, much narrower beam, uh, focused beam right now. There is a double cone, and what's interesting about this double cone, there appears to be a black ring between the inner and out of cone of light. So I do get some flood lamp light along with the spot, quite bright. One more light, turns off, on, and down. So once again, I get some Quite bright light, it looks very good. Now let's test out the camping lantern. All right, so one more set of tests. I have the Hoka light camping lantern with me. Now I'll just turn off the uh, headlamp that I'm using here. And we'll turn on the lantern. Whoa, <laughs> okay, that's bright. 360 degrees of intense lumens. That is bright. I can't even look at it, it is so bright. Now, let's see if I can turn it down one notch here. Woo! There's the lower intensity, and I don't know if you, if you, this is picking up, but uh, <laughs> this is not something I would walk with unless I held it way down because it's so bright, it's blinding to, to look at. But in a camp setting, if I were to sit, maybe I can, I'll sit this on the log here and move away from it. Will it sit here? looking for a nice level spot there okay if you can see that that is the lower intensity of the two lights so yeah that, that is bright without question that is very bright now I'll turn it off turn it on there is the red lamp 
Okay, you know, when I was doing the testing at home with it, that appeared to be much brighter than it is right now. Now, it's still bright, don't get me wrong. It's still bright. It's still a little hard to look at, so I think it's still a, it's going to give me some spots in my eyes. But it's a lot less bright than I thought it was. It doesn't illuminate out a long ways, but where it does, I can see clearly with the red light. So it would be helpful in terms of... Uh, Maybe not losing your night vision so badly. Certainly you would lose it very quickly with that other light. Now, let's see if we can get it to flash. Just one more setting. As I mentioned, you have to run through each of the cycles to get there. So I'm setting it on the log again. So yeah, this would make a, a great light if I needed to, if I was lost out here and I was trying to get attention of searchers, I suppose that would be quite good. If I was uh, stuck on, on the side of a road with my vehicle for whatever reason, that would be exceptionally useful for that purpose. You know, I've heard it said, I don't know if there's any proof to the research, that a flashing light like that will deter predator animals as well. Uh, it's not something I'm going to be able to put to a test, but it would be interesting, and I guess if it did help, it would help. All right, so that is testing the Hoko light uh, camp lantern along with the headlamp. A few closing thoughts for the headlamp and camping lantern from Hoko Light. So as you saw, they're effective when they're out in the woods. They do their job quite well within the limitations of their design. They certainly lack the refinement and some of the features that the more expensive lights have, but I think that's what this was all about. Finding good, reasonably priced alternatives to some of the more expensive lights. They will do exactly exactly what they want, they're intended to do while you have them. They just don't have all the bells and whistles the more expensive ones have. Now, having said that, there are a few things about the lights that I do want to point out. So number one, as I mentioned, is I'm not so sure about just how waterproof that charging port is on the back of this headlamp. I have not dunked it under water or worn it in the rain or gone swimming with it, so I can't attest to it uh, myself, but I suspect that it is water proof enough for most uses. Certainly one of the things that I'm likely to use something like this for is as a backup lamp maybe to something else that I'll drop into my backpack. It's lightweight, certainly makes it something that I don't mind doing that with. Uh, you know, reading around the campsite. I think it's perfectly suited to reading because it's got some just nice intensity. So most of the chores around a campsite, would I depend on it if with my life trying to get out of the woods at night if I was lost? I don't think so. If that was even a reason, reasonable possibility, I would take another light and use this as a backup. The camping lantern, it may not be a backpacking item. It is a bit heavier than you would probably want to carry, but for car camping or walking short distances, it has enough power for it that it will you know, last long enough throughout the night. Now, there is something about that that I find a little bit off, and that is the two intensities for the white lights are just fine. I don't mind those at all. Um, but it is the red light and the red strobe. So the red light is very bright, as you saw. It is much brighter than it needs to be if all you're looking for is some illumination inside of a tent or a campsite that you don't want to lose your night vision to the white light, but you want to be able to use the red light. It's it's a bit too bright, to be quite honest. And the fact that you have to cycle through each of the white lights before you get there means that you, unless you close your eyes, you've already lost some of your night vision to the white light. Now, there is one advantage to both of those, the, the intense br uh, bright red light, uh, either in strobe or in, in constant mode, and that is this is something you could use with you in your vehicle. So if you are in need of an emergency light on the side of a road, then, then this, the intensity of that is probably where it is best suited. Or I guess if you were lost in the woods, but if you go back to the fact that you're not likely to go backpacking with this, you're not likely to have it when it comes uh, to that point. So there are a few things about each of these lights that are less than ideal. But again, we have to bear in mind that these are budget lights. They don't have all the refinements and all the design features of the more expensive ones. Now, there's one thing I want to mention in addition to this, and that fact is, is that uh, shortly after having received these lights from Hoka Light, I received contacts from two other light manufacturers, 
offering virtually the same lights under a different name. And not, I won't mention them because it's not important. I, I, I responded that I wasn't interested in, in these other companies sending me their lights because I, I didn't see the point of having more lights that did exactly the same thing, looked exactly the same, just had different brand names on it. What I, I gather from that is that each of these companies are sourcing to the same offshore manufacturer and just rebranding them with their own name on them. In fact, neither of these lights have Hoko light written on it. It is more of a distributor of an unbranded uh, light name than it is anything else. And I'll tell you that for a reason, and that is because although I'm going to give you the links to where these can be purchased, if you look a little harder, you may find them at a better price under a different brand name. Now, what I can't tell you is, are they identical and will they perform as well as these? That's something you'll have to discover for yourself. Okay, that's all I have for you. Again, the whole point of this video was to share with you a couple of value lights that were less expensive and did most of the things most people are looking for from a headlamp or a camping lantern. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.